Hello, my name is Arlen Peebles, and welcome to a special edition of IPA Talk with PJ Capozzi, Superintendent of Meridian 223. We're sitting here in front of a green screen because PJ just finished filming his first Ed Leaders Network course for us, The Art and Science of Communication. PJ, what was that experience like for you? It was incredible. Uh, I say this to a lot of people, anyone that'll listen to me, is the ability to kind of travel around the country and see different places. We are, uh, I think in Illinois particularly, forget how fortunate we are for how advanced IPA is and the support they're doing and the tools they're putting out there. Um, so just the quality of production and support that I received in trying to create this um, was incredible. So it was a very interesting learning how to read off a teleprompter and, right, to, uh, and to move forward that way. But uh, again, just incredibly impressed with the professionalism and vision that IPA has. Now you did a course on communication. You also have a corresponding micro-credential that's gonna be coming out soon on communication as well. Talk to me about your experience with working with IPA on micro-credentials and what you see the value is of a micro-credential. So micro-credentials, I'm super excited to get in on kind of the ground floor of where we're, we're working at as a state and with IPA and that like it could be huge, right? Like so it has the potential to be a game changer. The ability to do what we kind of talk about as ed leaders all the time is hey, shouldn't we be really focused on competency and what having people demonstrate their knowledge and skills as opposed to playing the game of school or playing the game of professional development? Um, and micro-credentials basically says, okay, we know that this is what we want to do for kids, but we can do it for adults too. Um, and so the experience of kind of getting in on the ground floor and trying to help create what it would look like in terms of what knowledge skills does someone have to demonstrate to show mastery or proficiency in a certain area in order to receive a micro-credential has been an amazing experience for me. Um, it's been rigorous. Um, mm -hmm. ho hopefully the course is rigorous for people that take it. The writing of it has been a, a rigorous experience. Um, as I was joking earlier with you, kind of flashbacks to writing the dissertation, some PTSD oh, um, in terms of doing the research behind the research, it. Yes. Um, but uh, believe in the product and I believe in the process. I'm just really excited to be part of it. Uh, you also deliver an administrator academy for the Illinois Principals Association. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so currently I work on three academies with IPA, one on social media, one on kind of the journey to personalized learning, and the third on teacher evaluation. Haven't given that one in a while. Yeah. Um, so the, the social media and the journey to personalized learning I give several times a year. Uh, this The social media for school leaders I think is pretty self-explanatory and when I first started delivering it I thought there'd be a really short shelf life on it uh, but as we know social media continues to evolve right. um, and in some ways has evolved our society in general um, yet still as school leaders some are uh, reluctant to embrace it either on behalf of their school or on behalf of themselves and so that academy is driven at both of them and then the journey to personalized learning um, focuses on no technology is going to create innovation and personalized learning for our, our schools. It's about leadership and mindset, and pedagogy is always going to trump that. So I think that what happens a lot of times is that schools kind of move from traditional schooling and try to jump into personalized learning, and there's a lot of failure. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the research, it shows that that's a big struggle. And so the, the academy is about adopting the mindset, getting to student-centered instruction, and then from student-centered instruction, it dovetails nicely into personalized learning. But trying to jump from traditional to personalized, um, I think, is a fool's prophecy. Yeah. And so you've done a micro-credential and an ELN course on communication. Why do you feel like those are such important topics for school leaders to be aware of? I, I think it is leadership. Really? Uh, so communication is behavior. And in, in what we are able to do in terms of telling our story as leaders individually, again, which we're not great at because of the humble nature of educators, and then telling the story of our schools and our districts, is our ability to connect and communicate with our, with our people, with our stakeholders, with our constituents, with our, with our students. And so if we're not communicating well, um, assumptions kind of fill that gap. Mm -hmm. And so whatever someone's micro experience happens to be positive or negative is kind of how they assume. And so the way that I say it in the social media uh, admin academy is that people are telling your story. Yes. It's either you're doing it or somebody else is doing it for you. And if you don't believe me, just check social media, right? right. Like um, something, is, something is being told. And so if you can tell the story and be proactive and share the good things, but also be honest and say these are areas for growth and involve people in that conversation on how you're gonna get better, um, you have the opportunity to be really, really successful. Um, but in the absence of communication, that void gets filled up and that's usually negative and makes the already extraordinarily difficult job of being a school leader almost impossible. Wow, yeah, that's important for school leaders to recognize, I think, especially in this day and age with social media. Um, what about some tips that you can give, some brief tips you can give for educators who feel like they struggle um, in, in the communication realm? 
if you feel like you struggle in the communication realm and you've done the self-analysis and the work to understand where you, where you personally are deficient or uncomfortable, then understand that that doesn't forgive you the responsibility to communicate on behalf of your school, but allow yourself to leverage different people. So as a leader, my job is to help establish the brand and the vision. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be the one communicating it all the time. In fact, it's better when it isn't. So the Rotary has heard me speak seven times. But when they hear a 15-year-old that can articulate the vision of the school and what it means to them to be a student, that's a much, much more powerful message. Yes. So if you feel that you have are personally deficient in communication skills, that's great. Just create a good plan and leverage your people. And the, most, the best resource and the most underutilized resource we have in school are kids. Kids want to tell the story of the school. Give them, if you give them something to be proud of as, as a schooling experience, they're going to tell your story 100 times over and better than you can. Do you have any good examples of students of your own that have been able to share the story of Meridian? My favorite story uh, is of a student named, uh, we call him D, his name's Darius, and he's got a very complicated Eastern European last name to say, but um, he came to me a handful of years ago, uh, and he liked to do videography. And uh, when he came to me, I thought he was a senior because he was tall and broad-shouldered, and um, when he got talking, he was an eighth grader. Oh my God. And so for four years, we were able to leverage his videography skills, and he was able to, in his creative way, tell the story of our school. Um, and then in our creative way, we are able to make sure that everyone knew that he was the one doing it. And he's been able to parlay it into a very lucrative financial um, career at the age of 19 nice. um, because of the exposure he had in our community helping us tell our story. Um, and a lot of things that I thought we needed to do or wanted to do, um, his savvy insight, knowledge of social media, and knowledge of communication in 2016, 17, 18, 19 um, helped to guide me in, in different ways. So um, now he does video promotions for lots of our local community businesses, Excellent. runs my website, runs several other websites. Um, and so that's the biggest thing for me is that voice doesn't always mean voice. So the vision for our communication was helped constructed by a 16 and 17 year old who had expertise and passion for that topic. Um, so it doesn't just have to be that you're not comfortable in front of a camera and you're going to let someone else talk. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but it also can be the formation of the message and the branding that goes along with it. Excellent. That's a great story. Uh, what about some apps or software that you like to use that have assisted you in your communication? So the number one thing I would say is Class Intercom. It's Class a, Intercom. It's, okay. So it's a cost program for a district, but it's really, really low. So it's like seven, $800 for a district our size. Um, and what it does, it allows us to give access to all students and all teachers to post on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, now everything comes to us and we have to click accept, but okay. instead of it going through the, hey, here's a picture, please post it for me, which I think a lot of schools are doing, or giving away the password, which a lot of administrators get nervous about, yes. um, this allows for a very simple functionality where they post and they post on a platform that mirrors what platform they're reposting on so it doesn't feel foreign to them, and then it's a click accept and not accept. And so it goes, to the, it goes to you or someone? It goes, so we have it? like 30 different editors that we've given uh, permission okay. to actually be the one to submit, um, but it allows for much, many more voices to be told. And so um, for us, our hashtag is we are MCUSD, so a lot of times we forget that. So the edit button is, you know, if there's a blatant grammar error, we'll fix that, but a lot of times it's just adding the hashtag so we're staying on brand. Um, but it has allowed for a huge differentiation in voice, uh, and it, it just has taken a lot of time and effort off of the school leader's plate, right? Because a lot of times when I'm like, hey, we gotta get on social media, when I'm talking to administrators in other districts, I'm already working 65 hours a week, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to spend all this other time. Well, it's pretty easy when you're just clicking accept, 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 and you're spending right. 40 seconds a day, and now you've gotten 10 messages out. That's um, huge. It makes a huge difference. That's wonderful. Well, what's one final parting um, gift or message you would give to administrators who are going to be watching this talk um, and are interested in communication? I think what we know about improvement and continuous improvement cycles also applies to communication. Um, so very infrequently does a district, a school, or a leader have an improvement plan based off of communication alone. Mm -hmm. um, they're usually focused on academic outcomes, culture, um, those types of things. If we're serious about improving and you're going to do a deep self-analysis and you want to connect and engage more, there's plenty of data points with communication to create actually a comprehensive communications plan um, that will help the process of going through that helps to include the voice, but then also once you articulate goals, um, it provides a very public accountability partner for you to work toward that 
to do a little bit more to engage your community. Well, PJ, thank you so much for your time and coming on this IPA Talk. This has been PJ Capozzi, Superintendent of Meridian 223. If you're interested in the Ed Leaders Network course or the micro-credential, check out the links in the description below. Take care.